Hey everyone, Ramel here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video tutorial on how to set up the Synology DS918+. Plus. After turning on the unit, the first thing that you're going to want to do is head to find.synology.com and this is going to list the devices that's on your network and hopefully it finds the new Synology DS918+. Plus. For me, I still have the 212J and the 918 plus connected, but I'm going to connect to the 918 plus. After accepting the end user's license agreement, you're just going to want to hit setup. And there's just going to be a quick warning that tells you it's going to delete your data on the drives. So make sure you have that backed up or you have fresh drives like me. This does take about 10 minutes and after this is done there is another 10 minutes where the unit restarts but that only took about eight minutes for me after the server restarts it's going to prompt you for a server name as well as an admin username and password i just went with username and generated the password with dash lane the next part is when you can select automatic or manual updates, but for me, I went with manual updates. Uh, you're gonna set up the Quick Connect account after, and this is used to connect to your NAS over the internet without having to deal with the port forwarding. And after that, you're gonna be brought right into DSM. It's gonna look pretty familiar. It looks like a desktop, but it's just all running through a web browser. For me, I find it really easy to use and very familiar because it has the same UX as a desktop. I do make sure that I'm on the latest DSM because I'm doing a NAS to NAS migration and it does have a requirement for being on the same version. I also make sure that my settings look correct as well as trying to figure out where to put that static IP address, but I don't need that right now. I'm also good. You also need to create the volumes first before being able to create a shared folder, which, but this does bring up the storage manager, which would but this does bring up the storage manager and through the storage manager, you should be able to create the volume. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna be going with SHR1. I feel like one disk fault tolerance is good enough for me and I do have four bays, so I'm gonna be filling this up as soon as possible to make sure that everything is safe. After you go through the wizard, it's gonna start creating the volume and once the volume is done being created, it's going to do a parity check and verify the disks. But you can start using it once the volume is created. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys like that. I'm going to be doing the migration video next. So stay tuned for that. If you want to see how to transfer between an older NAS and a newer one, Anyways, that's it. I'm out. Peace.